It is important to embrace exploration, innovation, and discovery. Without it as a species, where would we be? We need to encourage people from diverse backgrounds to explore, from all walks of life, the places that we least expect to discover, which is also the beauty of innovation itself. The introduction of something new, or a new idea, a breakthrough, or my favorite definition of innovation, significant positive change, advancing the frontiers of knowledge. For example, what if I told you that one of you could be responsible for landing an unmanned spacecraft on Mars, or discovering the origins of the universe, or ushering the world into the next frontier of space exploration? There are people working on those very things today because they believed in the possibilities of exploration, innovation, and discovery, and embraced adversity along the way. Like what we're going to be seeing here in this video from just last week, courtesy of SpaceX, after four failed attempts, this is the historical first ever SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket first stage landing on a drone barge in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And this is with an accuracy of less than a meter, which is a breakthrough for the future of commercial space flight. Absolutely incredible. Thank you. <laughs> and today, I would like to share my journey with you and how it connects with embracing adversity in its various forms and hopefully will connect with you. My passion for exploration, innovation, and discovery started at a pretty early age. Uh, you know, I was always curious about how things worked, and specifically, I loved the, the five W's. So how many have heard of or learned the five W's yet in school or elsewhere? The who, what, when, where, why, and of course, how. And I was so fascinated with this approach toward problem solving, in addition to the scientific method, of course. Love that. How cool that we can actually have a framework for discovery, a, a process to answer fundamental questions and uncovering just how the universe works. This type of thinking naturally led me to explore science and space. A large part of that sense of wonder and just amazement of the world and the universe was also encouraged by my parents, and I'm very grateful for their support. And they encouraged me to participate in science fairs and competitions with the famous volcano experimentation. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Or researching of rocks and materials, learning about planetary geology, and gaining insights into the history of our Earth. I also came up with various product inventions, one of which was a, or a prototype, which was a, for a food insulation method, which I actually never got patented, by the way. That's OK. <laughs> What also contributed greatly to my passion for exploration was the elementary school that I attended. It was dedicated to Commander Francis R. Scobie, one of the astronauts from the, from the uh, unfortunate space shuttle Challenger mission in 1986. And because of that dedication, we had the unique opportunity to engage closely with NASA. And I was so proud to be a student there. I joined the Young Astronauts program. I was at seven, or I was around seven years old, and you can see this the arrow that's pointing to the uh, to the side of the photo. One of those many uh, many kids, and I actually still have my T-shirt today from the Young Astronauts program. But um, that was when I really first became aware of and and grasped the possibilities of space exploration. And it was also in addition to learning about this amazing physicist and astronaut. Sally Ride. She was the first American woman in space in 1983. And to this day, she also remains the youngest American astronaut to have ever traveled in space at 32 years old. I thought, wow, how incredible. This is something within our reach that anyone can aspire towards. Also in school, 
I loved discovering the applications of technology and computer science, and I can hear from the laughs in the crowd. <laughs> I know that my computer uh, might look a, look a little different than yours does today, but learning this new te technology back then, I was so excited and I was captivated. And also, of course, learning more about life sciences and biology and also a love of mine, physics. For example, during our school trips, I remember my friends would be reading all of these cool magazines and I would be kind of off in the corner and uh, just getting fascinated by string theory or theoretical physics by my favorite, one of my favorite physicists, Brian Greene. And although for, for me personally, as much as I loved science and discovering and learning how things worked, it always felt like the world was trying to discourage me in some way from either being picked on in school to receiving negative feedback from friends, family, teachers, my community. And it usually started with these skeptical questions or statements, labels from TV, music, pop culture, uh, or just, I guess, in general, the, the advertising uh, industry that was always seeming to ignore the young female students in science, technology, and math and an overall negative mindset toward women who are interested in pursuing careers in science. So some of the things that I remember, such as math is boring, science is confusing, or what will that amount to, or engineering, ah, oh, that's only for boys, or even better yet, for train conductors. <laughs> Computer science, not for you, or physics, what is that gonna amount to in the real world? So, don't even think about that. Okay, well, as a young student, I have to say, I'm sure many of you can relate, that it's, it's pretty hard to be told no for the things that you're passionate about. So it was in those moments that I actually would remember this photo of the 1927 Fifth Solvay International Conference, which is a physics conference founded by Belgian chemist Ernest Solvay and he would gather some of the world's brightest to tackle and solve challenges uh, in, in physics and, and chemistry. And I, I'm sure you can see, you're, you see some familiar faces, one of which, the, uh, the, the one in the middle with the silly hair, or uh, world-renowned physicist Albert Einstein, also one of my personal heroes. And now 17 of these attendees, or 29 attendees actually, were or became Nobel Prize winners. And Marie Curie, the woman in the bottom left of the photo, she was one of them. She was the first woman ever to win a Nobel Prize. And she won for her pioneering research in radioactivity. And she went on to be the only person to win two Nobel Prizes in multiple sciences. So how do you think she approached adversity? Or how do you think she would approach similar skeptical questions or statements while pursuing her path to greatness? I mean, she certainly recognized that she deserved a seat at the table, and this was in 1927. So, I mean, if she could do that then. So many applications later, I got accepted finally to study molecular biology and work in a cellular and molecular biology laboratory throughout college. I thought, okay, I have arrived. And as happy as I was to go work in the lab every day, I still didn't quite fit in. For one thing, it was mostly male scientists, but I noticed exactly how difficult it was for, for not just females, but for everybody to get recognized for their work and their research in such a, a competitive environment. So I decided to leave the lab and my path toward a PhD in molecular biology behind, and I segued into business, media, philanthropy, and then actually went back into science and technology, but in a different way. And now this is where my journey converges and has led me to here. The International Space Station is one of the greatest human and technological achievements in our history. Space agencies from the United States, Russia, Japan, Canada, 11 countries in Europe all came together to build this unique place and demonstrating just incredible, an incredible convergence of science and technology, remarkable breakthroughs that are just not possible here on Earth. So to put into perspective, 
It's about the same size as a football field and at 250 miles above the Earth, flying at about 17,150 miles per hour, completing 16 orbits a day, or roughly about 90 minutes that's circling the Earth every day. It's fast enough, actually, to go to the moon and back in one day. So just take a minute and think of that. Imagine how fast that actually is. And it has more livable space than a five-bedroom house. It has two bathrooms, a gym, but, and I know that may sound pretty large, but you actually have to cram six astronauts, cosmonauts, research, and thousands of pounds of, of food, supplies, and, and of course, you know, because it serves a, as a research laboratory, there's so many incredible things and hardware that's up there as well. So it's, we have exposure to microgravity and extreme conditions, radiation, hot or cold temperatures, and crews conduct experiments in biology, physiology, physics, medicine, chemistry, earth observation, and to this day, it is still considered to be the largest artificial satellite to have ever orbited the Earth. And guess what? This incredible place, it's accessible to each and every one of you. Now, it may seem silly, but I think that the space station can serve as a symbol for all of us. Facing these extreme conditions and yet accomplishing some great things that can impact humankind. Now, I will admit my encounters with adversity are not at the same level that many others face. But after having been told many, many things like, no, you can't, you shouldn't, try something else, it doesn't make sense, or push down, discriminated, I embraced all of those things to set my own course and to chart my own path. And those notions of exploration, innovation, and discovery I learned as a child, they provided the tools and insights to push me forward, to aspire, to take action, and above all, to never stop questioning. In addition to one of my favorite quotes from my friend, our friend, Albert Einstein, and his insights, and to summarize the lessons of my journey so far and what I've learned from the world and our place in the universe, there's one thing that I want you to remember and that I would like to leave with you here today. Every single one of you has the opportunity to create the future that you want to live in. Thank you. Thank you.